It's been quiet on the recruiting front, but things are about to heat up this summer. Who is Texas looking to add to an already impressive roster? And when can we expect to see some of these dominoes start to fall? Justin Wells, recruiting aficionado at Inside Texas, returns to update us on Texas's big board and which big names we are battling it out for. Inside Texas is the best spot to stay plugged in on everything Texas recruiting. Subscribe to InsideTexas.com today. Link in the description. The 2024 class is starting to come into view, so let's see who can make a difference for us. Without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome back, Justin, and let's look at the bigger picture first. Sark has always had a patient outlook on recruiting, but when do we start to see some of the big pieces start to drop in the 24 cycle? Uh, that's hard to say. They're being a lot more judicious in the process. Last two years, it started a little bit sooner. This time around, before the summertime enters, you, you've got your quarterback and Trey Owens. You got your athlete, wide receiver slash DB and Hunter Modden. And then you've got the, uh, the the punter, Michael Kern, out of uh, Miami. And so right now, I think you could start seeing some movement in June. Official visits will start to hit. That's when the activity is going to get a lot more hectic. You'll start seeing kids, you know, making a lot of trips, making more decisions. I'm sure something will happen between now and then. But right now, I, I look at early July as the date as there's a strong group of kids that want to be settled in and get their spot before their senior year starts. Going into specific positions, we have been dominant in the running back recruiting world, and that trend seems like it'll continue. Since we talked last, what's the update on number one back in the class, Jared Gibson out of Florida, and my personal favorite back in this cycle, Arizona's Christian Clark? 1A and 1B is Jared Gibson and Christian Clark. After last year's haul for Tashard Choice with Cedric Baxter and Trey Wisner, he's going big game hunting again. Same state again, like last year in Florida. Loves IMG Academy tailback, Jarrett Gibson. And then you look out at Arizona and you've got Christian Clark, who grew up watching B. John Robinson, a big fan. Came to Texas in, in, in the spring. Absolutely loved it. He'll take an official visit that last weekend in June with a handful of other big-time prospects. Texas, uh, at the running back position, it, it looks pretty easy, even though on the surface it's not. It, it's looking relatively smooth with Gibson and Clark being the 1A and 1B of their targets. Those are the two guys Texas wants. They're still in the mix for a handful of other tailbacks, but they're all going to be after those two. Those are the main ones. And for choice, when you have three running backs taken in the first three or four rounds of the 2023 20, NFL draft, uh, that's only going to help your recruiting acumen. That's only going to help you when you're in-house, in-home with these coaches, with these parents. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if those two guys both land in Austin at some point. That would be a stacked haul. And last year we had success in wide receiver recruiting, but we're looking to continue that with Chris Jackson as the new coach. Who are the names we need to pay attention to at wideout? Yeah, when, when you talk about wide receiver, it begins and ends with Lake Belton star Micah Hudson. One of the best players in the country, one of the top prospects in the state. There, Texas is squarely in the mix, along with Texas Tech, Ohio State, Texas A&M is also in the mix. Alabama, probably going to get a visit. Micah Hudson's the man, and that's, that, that's when you start wide receiver conversations. After that... You look at guys like a Jordan Anderson out of Newport Beach out in California. He's an Oregon commit. Actually caught up with him on Sunday. He's setting an official visit to Texas in June. The date is to be determined, but he told Inside Texas that he will be there. It's a second trip. Chris Jackson, new wide receiver coach, is very fond of the Oregon commit. That's why I, I think you're seeing more receiver offers coming out of the West Coast. Obviously, where Sark's from and Coach Jackson as well. Anderson is, is, is on that board right underneath Michael. Hudson. And then you got a couple other guys like a, like a Bryant Wesco. He's more, he's favoring a little bit more of Oklahoma right now. Oh, you started the relationship a lot sooner. Jackson's playing catch up in Texas as much as, as much as they can. I think they're making a dent. They're trying to get him on campus in June. That visit will tell us a lot about where Texas stands in the West Coast uh, sweepstakes. Kid's a talent, man. He really is. He runs with an easy stride. He's got good length. He's got great hands. Wesco's definitely a dude 
and a Parker Livingstone out of Lucas Lovejoy. Both of those kids are takes right now. I think Texas is in a great spot with Livingstone. He's actually playing baseball right now in the second round of the of the playoffs. I've gone to see him a few times here recently. He's a legit 6'4", 180, 185 pound athlete. Ran a 21'6", 200 on track. This kid does not lack for size and speed and, and, and durability. His dad was a college baseball player. His brother's a college baseball player. They're just athletes in that family and I love where Texas stands with Livingstone as he takes his last official visit in June to Austin and then at offensive line flood stack two excellent classes back to back for this year what's the strategy with the offensive line and who are some key names on the big board yeah, when, when you sign two halls like they did in the last two cycles, Kyle Flood completely renovated that O-line room. It's got depth. They've got the guys now. They've recruited the guys they want. The 2024 cycle is a little down in state. They're, they're, they're looking nationwide in this regard. Uh, one guy that, that's really, really high on the board is Daniel Cruz, the center prospect out of uh, North, Richland, North Richland Hills. Uh, he's a guy that I think Texas looks great for. He's, he's visited UT a half a dozen times, it feels like. He'll be back in June for an official visit. He's also going to see Ohio State. There's a few other ones in the mix, but I think Texas looks the best there right now. Ori Williams, big, long uh, offensive tackle out of San Marcos, size 18 shoe. He's one big joker. Texas looks good there. LSU is going to be a team they're going to try to fight off. Bennett Warren out of Fort Bend Christian Academy down in Houston. He's another kid that, that that's probably going to take an official visit to Texas. He's a more, he's looking more nationally what, as well. You know, he's not from Texas. He's in a military family. So he's got a, a visit to Oregon coming up. He's got a visit to Michigan coming up. And so Warren is another one that's kind of looking around. But top to bottom, they just did so well in the last, last cycle. They're not overly pushing for anybody in particular outside of probably a Daniel Cruz. The number's still going to be four, m- most likely, you know, a baseline of four in this cycle. But th- they're they're in such a good position with the last two hauls. They're being a little judicious with this, and that that's smart because they, they want to bring in a big-name guy like a Brandon Baker out of modern day, the number one tackle in the country, or a Daniel Calhoun out of Georgia, uh, a, a big-time interior guard prospect. They're, they're looking for some big guys, too, and they're, they're thinking – a big season in 2023 might help them in that regard. But that's why you're not seeing as much O-line movement early on as you did the last two years, just because they stocked the cupboard so much. They're in a portion of cherry picking in this cycle. It's crazy that we're able to cherry pick now after being so desperate for bodies just a couple of years ago. On the opposite side, we know Bo Davis is looking for SEC bodies, especially in the deep South. Who should we key in on at that interior defensive line spot? This, this is another one in state that's a little down, but that has not stopped Texas from, from going nationwide. It, it, it cycles back up in 2025. There's some really good D-line talent in state in the next class. But for right now, some of the names you need to know, Alex January, he's a Texas legacy. His dad, Mike, played linebacker at, at, at Texas in the late 80s, early 90s. The Duncanville, six foot five, 300 305-pound uh, nose is two-year starter. He's barely 16 years old. He's been a two-year starter at Duncanville, helping win a state championship last year. He's got his official visit set. He's going to see Oklahoma. He's going to see Florida State. He's going to see LSU. And then Texas last. I think Texas is in a great spot there, and I think a decision will be coming around probably in early July. I feel like that family is is winding down the process as we speak. Terrence Hibbler is another one they really like. Big guy that can move from the southeast region. Another one is DeAndre Robinson uh, down in or- Orlando Jones High School. He's another one that's down to Ohio State, Florida, and Texas. He'll be on for an official visit in June as well. And so this is a position where we feel like they've got to throw some numbers in, in this cycle, simply because last year they only took one and that, that they had to go in the portal for depth. I think you could see more D linemen offers come out. Maybe with more of a, a, a senior evaluation period over the summer. But when you enter the SEC, buddy, you got to have some big dogs waiting in the, in, in the pen. And that's what they need to do with this cycle. They need to throw some bodies at that, at that spot just so they can maintain that depth. And don't forget how PK and Bo Davis like to rotate. To continue that rotation, they're going to have to continue to recruit at a pretty high level. And that's going to require three or four guys out of this cycle. I think defensive line needs to restock, especially with who we can lose in next year's draft on top of who we just lost. And then, of course, we have the obligatory, are we going to land some true pass rushers question? Luckily, we have some great ones in state. So 
What's the latest on Colin Simmons and Zena Umiozulu? Colin Simmons remains the number one priority on defense. He is a premier five-star Sunday type player, ultra athletic, bends the edge. He's fast. He's quick. He's strong. He's got great feet. He's great in pursuit. This kid has turned himself into a monster. This recruitment is, is the essence of a marathon. It's going to stretch. You're going to hear every school when it comes to him. Just know Texas is there. I, I fully, we fully expect them to get an official visit either in June or during the regular season. If they have a good season in 2023, like they should, they'll be even closer in the sweepstakes. But understand, Texas is battling three teams: LSU, Alabama, and Georgia. So success on the field is a big deal for Simmons. NIL is going to be a big deal for Colin Simmons. So if you're a Texas fan, just learn about who he is, watch his film, and enjoy it because this recruitment is nowhere near over with, and I think you'll see this thing drag out to early National Signing Day. For Zena, you got another Texas legacy. Not so much legacy, but his brother, Neto, currently on campus. So Zena's seen Texas probably more than any other recruit. 6'5", he's up to 6'5 now, between 225 and 230. Went and saw him the other day. He's got official visits, getting dates for Texas, Miami, Oklahoma. LSU's in the mix still. Georgia's in the mix still. I fully expect Texas to have him in an official in June. He told me he, he doesn't want to drag the process out. He's watched his brother's recruitment for years and then his own recruitment. I can just tell Zena's ready to kind of start winding it down when he takes these officials. He might save a few for the fall, but I feel like he'll be committed to a school in August, early September. He told me he wants this all done before he starts his senior year, so it's not a distraction. Not to mention he's an early enrollee. A lot of times those kids like to have their school lined up a little bit earlier because when you're trying to enroll in college earlier, there's a ton of paperwork and transcripts and things that have to happen. Texas looks fantastic there. They just have to recruit through the whistle and stay the course uh, if they want to add another Umazulu to the roster. Landing both of those guys would be a major turning point on the roster. And last year, Choate landed an excellent linebacker haul, but what's the 24 cycle looking like currently? You start, when you talk about linebackers in state for 2024, you start and you end with Justin Williams. Conroe Oakridge, dude, is a dude. It reminds me of the linebackers of the last few years, those must-get guys, Malik Jefferson, Harold Perkins, Anthony Hill. Justin Williams is in that category. He is a tracker and smacker, big, fast, strong, smart, instinctive. Texas, Texas is in the mix there. They don't look as good there as they do with some other players, though. Oregon has seemed to be the, the pace setter for Williams for the longest time. I know Texas is going to try to get him back on campus. They're not going to stop recruiting him. He's that valuable of a prospect, but they're playing from behind in that regard. Ty Anthony Smith, they look great. Uh, ultra linebacker, uh, athlete out of Jasper. That's another one that I think there's a lot of offers there. And there are a lot of big schools. And I know Alabama likes him. I know LSU likes him. Texas A&M loves him. Baylor, TCU loves him. But from top to bottom, it's always felt like Texas kind of has an advantage there. Or Texas has a slight lead. They've, they've done such a good job at building that relationship. And with PK and Coach Choate and those guys, there's there's a really good bond there. And, and Ty Anthony feels like it's family whenever he's in Austin. I think that'll resonate right before he makes his decision. After signing a ton of linebackers last year, I want to say four, maybe five in the 2023 cycle, 2024 is going to be a little bit lighter there. And I think that's why Texas is being a lot more judicious in their offers for that position. Yeah, luckily we can afford to be more patient with the linebackers this year. And finally, we do have some great in-state defensive backs to choose from. Jerry Hamilton put in a prediction for five-star Kobe Black the other day. So what's the update on him? And what's the latest intel on the other key corners and safeties we're after? With so many positions in state being down in 2024, defensive back is not one of them. There are some real, real dogs. And it starts with Kobe Black, number one corner in the state, out of Waco Conley. Uh, we broke the news last week that he's taking an official visit to Texas in late June. Uh, that's the first official he's set. He's going to see Ohio State on an official in mid-June. That's the second one he's set. I think you can also expect Texas A&M to get an official, LSU or Alabama to get an official, and then TCU to probably get that last one. With Kobe Black, you know, a year ago when I went to see Kobe, Texas wasn't really in the mix that much. They had just sort of offered. They were just sort of building the relationship. Texas looks really good right now. I, I, I don't I, – you could probably call him the quiet leader 
one of the big selling points is, is Ryan Watts, you know, because Kobe wants to play early and Ryan's going to grab, will, will likely leave for the draft after this next season. And so when Sark tells you watch number six, cause he's going to be possibly gone in January and that could be the spot you could slide into. Kobe listened and Kobe likes that. Right now, Texas just has to stay the course because there's going to be a lot of, you know, those schools, he's a top priority for a lot of schools, a lot of programs. And so regardless of how Texas stands, they have to recruit him hard. Having his teammate signee 2023 guy, Jelani McDonald, has helped. And so Kobe talks to Jelani on a regular basis about that. Corian Gibson's one that he's labeled as a safety, but with his size, he can come down he can play some corner, and you're so much more valuable at corner than you are safety at the college and pro level. Corian's a guy that Texas looked great for a year ago. His former high school coach at Lancaster, Chris Gilbert, was uh, one of the recruiting staffers for the University of Texas. That helped them a lot. But when Coach Gilbert left in the offseason to take the tight end coaching job at North Texas, Gibson started kind of falling away from Texas, so to speak. He still really likes Texas. He still has an official visit set up in June. But when he went to Clemson a couple months ago, they blew him away to the point he returned like three weeks ago. They've really made an, an impression on him. Alabama's made a pretty solid impression. I know LSU and Georgia have, have, have been in the mix as well. But at the end of the day, Texas is going to get that official. Texas is going to be in whatever top schools list he drops. But I, I would give the, the, the lean goes to Clemson right now because whatever they're selling, he's buying. Selman Bridges. You don't see very many six foot four corners. And Texas likes him at corner. They like him at nickel, potentially at safety. He can actually flip his hips at that height. I, I went and watched him play football, obviously, last year, but then I saw him play basketball. Then I watched him run track. He's got that fluidity and size. This kid was like ranked in the 350 range as a prospect six months ago. Now he's number 48 overall in the country. He's had a big ascension. I was actually in Lake Belton the day that, that Texas did offer. Steve Sarkeesian and Jeff Banks had stopped by the school to do that. He's also, if you recognize the name Lake Belton, he's teammates with the number one receiver, Micah Hudson. They are in no way a package deal. But I did ask Selman a few weeks ago, you know, if there was a school that you could see both of you guys playing at, you know, what would that be? And he said, well, it'd be Texas. He said, we both really like Texas. It's both, it's close to both of our homes and families. And both of them being at Texas is not far-fetched. And the fact that Texas has made up so much ground, Sark is the primary contact for both of those recruits. That is really resonates with their family. And so Coach Cope does a great job for the Lake, Lake Belt and Broncos and, and those two guys, Selman Bridges, in the, in the mix. Finally, you've got a guy that you're probably not as familiar with, but you need to be. And that's defensive back Andre Evans, six foot, about 170 pounds, criminally underrated. Texas has been by the school multiple times already to see him. They really want to get him on an official visit. They want to get him on campus, and I feel like they will. Blake Gideon was by there last week. This is a kid that projects probably more at safety, but he's got so much athleticism. You don't want to you don't want to typecast him. You don't want to put him in one compartment. He can probably do a little bit of everything. And if he can play corner, which is what the, the scouts feel like, he may be a, a you know a corner take as well. Andre Evans is a kid that. Not a lot of people are talking about or hearing about, but in a few years, you're going to know that name really well. He is a superb athlete, a great kid. He, he, he He's in the right system. He gets maximized constantly. This is a guy that I think Texas is closer and closer to pounding on the table for, hey, we need this one in the cycle. And so when you see that offer go across or you see that visit get scheduled, understand Andre Evans is a take and he's slowly turning into a potential priority. Dropping knowledge as always. Thank you, Justin. Please let the fans know where they can find your constant recruiting updates. Always come see us at InsideTexas.com. It's the best community in the market. We have such a good time. You can find me on Twitter at JustinWells2424, but, but come see us at InsideTexas.com. It, it, right now, we, we've got a ton of stuff going on. May is nothing but recruiting stuff setting up for, for, for June. Team stuff as the, as the offseason transitions into to summer workouts in early June. And so be sure and check us out at InsideTexas.com. And as always, nothing but love to my man, Texas Homer. And that's a wrap on Justin Wells. Head over to InsideTexas.com and sign up today. Thanks for hanging out. Watch some more of my videos here. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you want to support quality Texas content. As always, book on.